Hello and welcome to another tutorial of Microtech Canada's online MTCNA course. This is episode 31 and in this session we're going to begin our introduction to the interesting topics of firewall and packet flow in router OS. We'll start today's session with a short explanation of the basic and common sense rationale behind firewalls, introduce local and wide area networks, touch upon the topics of MPLS and OSI layer 2.5 and talk about physical in and out interfaces on the packet flow diagram. In our lives, as members of different societies, we come across millions of people. You can think of a person in a society as a router within a large online network. The people, or shall we say the devices with whom we interact, have different levels of familiarity. Some of them are close or familiar enough that have our trust, and we respond to them quite easily and comfortably. Others, however, may not be so close to us, and in case they make a request, we may question their intentions and require more information before interacting with them. Even those you trust may sometimes make requests that force you to ask further questions before fulfilling their demands. But anyhow, broadly speaking, we have people close to us, including parents, spouses, siblings, and children, and so on, who create our inner social circle, and then there are those with whom we also interact on a daily basis, but do not necessarily trust fully. This latter group creates our outer social circle. Substituting that person with a router and a society with a network, Put simply, the inner circle will be referred to as the local area network or LAN and the outer circle will be referred to as the wide area network or WAN. On our MTCNA home lab network, from the viewpoint of the class AP, LAN includes the trainee router and the trainee PC, and WAN consists of our main internet switch and whatever is beyond that on the wider internet domain. From here on out, we'll use these cloud-shaped network icons to refer to our local and wide area networks. On a different note, you remember that we talked about the OSI model of network layers a couple of times in previous videos. As mentioned before, the OSI model includes seven layers divided into the two main categories of media layers and host layers. Media layers included the three main layers of physical, data link, and network. But that's not all. Between layers 2 and 3, we have a kind of crossover layer referred to as layer 2.5. Unlike layers 1, 2, and 3 that handle specific types of data, the ongoing traffic on layer 2.5 is of different kinds. Also, unlike layers 2 and 3 that work with MAC and IP addresses, layer 2.5 uses labels for operation. Now, what is the significance of layer 2.5? That relates to a concept called MPLS or multi-protocol label switching that, as we'll soon see, is part of packet flow in router OS. If we take a look at the network protocols under layer 2.5 in the OSI model, we can find MPLS along with ARP that we discussed in previous sessions as well as PPPoE that we'll deal with in tutorials about VPN. MPLS is a routing technique that directs data from one endpoint to another using labels. The importance of labels is that unlike network addresses that recognize the endpoints themselves, labels identify the path between these endpoints. And since MPLS, similar to ARP, operates in a layer that is somehow a crossover between layers 2 and 3, that layer has become known as layer 2.5. For now, that's all you need to know about MPLS, since it is one of the topics discussed in detail in the MTCINE course. And now, it's time for packet flow. This is the main diagram of packet flow in router OS. It may look quite complicated, but once you get the hang of it, it's a piece of cake. For now, let's forget about all diagram paths. As you see, this diagram has five main sections. First, there are the physical in and out interfaces. Then, we have the bridging stage, the MPLS stage, and the routing stage. An important thing to note is that each of these stages relate to one of the media layers of the OSI model. The physical in and out interfaces are related to layer 1, 
that is a physical layer, while bridging is related to layer 2 or the data link layer. MPLS, as just mentioned, is related to layer 2.5. And finally, the routing stage operates in layer 3 or the network layer. And the last box you see on the right refers to all the activities and operations that happen strictly inside the router and do not concern devices outside a given device. Now, with this short glance at the packet flow diagram, let's focus on the physical interfaces. If we look at the MTCNA Home Lab from the viewpoint of the Class AP between its local and wide area networks, when the traffic flows from LAN to WAN, the physical in interface of this sample image will be Ether 1, while the physical out interface will be Ether 4. However, when the reply from WAN is coming back or the traffic is generated in WAN and directed toward LAN, the physical in and out interfaces switch places. Therefore, an important thing to know is that physical interfaces are not fixed, and the direction of the traffic is the determining factor for the physical in and out interfaces on a given device. You can see this better on the home lab network. If the LAN is sending traffic toward WAN, the physical in interface of the class AP is the WLAN1 to class interface, while the physical out interface is the Ether1 to Internet. However, if the WAN is generating traffic toward LAN, it would be the other way around. Okay, you're now clear on what we mean when talking about the physical in and out interfaces of a given device, and the role of layer 1 in packet flow. Stay tuned for our next tutorial in which we'll talk about different types of expected traffic, their behavior, and where you can find them in router OS. Many thanks for watching. Write your questions in the comment section, and if you like our videos, Please subscribe and give us a thumbs up.